Greg? Here. Sarah? Here. John? Here. Nathan's here. Doug is excused. He's got to work for them. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Number three, the consent agenda. Any changes? Nope. Do I have a motion? Consent agenda. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Nays? Thank you. Item four, public input. Uh, this is the time and place for discussion items not already on the agenda with a time limit of three minutes each. Anyone? Anyone? Okay. Uh, moving on to 5A, budget presentation. Rhodes. All right. Uh, everybody has these on your package, correct? Correct, yeah. I don't have any. It's in the. It's in on the computer. computer. Yeah. Yep. It's on the computer. No, I, I just said. I'll just have it in your packet on the. On this, the this is your packet. I asked for a packet. I need a packet because I want that. This is a packet. That is a packet. That is a computer screen. Were we doing roads? Yeah, roads. We're on roads. Um. So up the top, don't worry about the revenues on any of these because some of these are going to fluctuate. Um, this is just best guesstimate based on the current um, road use tax that comes in. If you go down to expenditures, um, really nothing has changed per se. Um, we've just kind of gone through, especially like vehicle operations, uh, vehicle repair, gas and electric, all that stuff. You just kind of have to see where it's at so far. Um, this sheet here is through six months approximately. So if you can see actual year to date, we kind of seen where we were at and just adjusted the numbers accordingly, kind of essentially doubled them to know where we're going to be at. So okay. uh, everything's pretty pretty close to where it was um, last year. You'll notice uh, one of the big ticket items under uh, repair, maintenance, and utilities is street maintenance supplies. And you can see the notes down there. That's going to be the salt and sand um, that we get for the streets. Uh, to get on to the next portion, uh, contractual services, that's going to be your engineering expense. Um, if we do any type of rental or leasing of equipment that we may not um, have to do a, a job. Uh, big one here, street maintenance. Uh, this will be uh, seal coating and crack sealing. Um, I still left the note in there for the Highway 30 repairs, even though that's not going to be budgeted. As of right now, uh, we did talk to V&K and the bids still aren't very good. Uh, Dave, you have any update on that at all? We have a project that we did next month, and that will give us a pretty good indication of what the asphalt prices are as we go on the way. Okay. So if you recall, the DOT gave us that money for Highway 30. Um, if we do get a price and they advise us to go to bid, we can adjust that accordingly with the money that's in that account for that. Is this wishful thinking? I mean, are we are we looking to for it to come down at some point? Is there any reason to think it's going to come down? We generally make adjustments after the first of the year. So if we try to bid it uh, before we get to the end of the year, contracts are hedging. So now that we have the prices established, we should be able to identify what those are. This project that we have coming up will tell us pretty quickly whether we're competitive with the pricing or not, and if it's worth us pursuing that with the, uh, the contractor and trying to put our project out to bid. So. I'll report back once I get those bills. Okay, thank you. But I imagine we're sitting on that million bucks. Yeah, we have a treasury report. Yep. Okay. It's in, it's in that account. Okay. This, all this comes out of. All right. Um, everything else is just normal. Just kind of seeing where we're at for the year. You see other contractual services. Um, we actually dropped down a little bit there since we're only at 473. Um, Minor equipment down under commodities. You can see the permanent notes that we're going to take out is the used chipper. Obviously, that's been purchased and the new paint sprayer, which we purchased last year. Um, one thing Travis would like to purchase is an end loader. Um, the end loader, we had uh, for sauerkraut days, we rented a telescoping end loader from Rexco. And um, we used that to move the blocks for the barricades for sauerkraut days and did it about a third of the time. Um, 
with this end loader you can obviously scoop snow, um, you can put a blade on it, um, many different things. Um, the end goal with this is to purchase this and then trade the backhoe and the mini hoe in on a new mini hoe next year and those two things on a trade should equal what a new mini hoe, so it'd be kind of almost a dollar trade. So then you'd end up with an end loader and a mini hoe instead of a backhoe and a mini hoe. Um, just getting around uh, the more uses with the end loader. So um, we did budget. Um, we're going to try to get creative on this and pull from several different, obviously this end loader is going to be used on streets. Um, it's going to be used to get to the water tower, it's going to get used to the sewer plant, it's going to get used to move blocks for events for public safety. So there's many different avenues where we want to pull the money from. Um, the bid he has right now um, is about 165000 We're going to try to uh, Try to get one smaller than that. Uh, we're hoping 120 to 150 somewhere in that ballpark. Um, but with the money coming out of here, there is a little bit in capital improvement, uh, forced roads, and then we were going to pull some from water, sewer, um, parks, and um, a little bit from the EMA for the festivities. So, um, anyway, that's why that's at $65,000. Uh, if you have any questions about it, we can talk now. If you have, want to talk to Travis or for the uses or what you're thinking or thoughts on that. But we are actually have that covered right now. You're upgrading. Yes. You'd be upgrading. I'm trying to get it all covered within the money that we have without going outside. Yeah, that's what, what I'm still asking is, is, I mean, I'd love to have a new Corvette, but I got a 2004 Corvette that works just fine. Uh, do we need this? Well, we really don't have anything, to, one, to move those blocks. And two, we don't really have anything. We have the Bobcat to go downtown. Um, this would be better. Uh, you can get in and out. You can put a blade on it. So basically right now what we're doing when we got to go onto the parking and things are wet, we end up using my personal skid loader so we don't tear up with the city skid loader because I have a track machine. This is a telescoping end loader so we can stay on the pavement and reach out 10 to 16 feet so we can stay on the hard. It's not, it's not your normal end loader, it's a telescoping end loader. So um, basically like for the derecho, we can reach in and grab it. I mean, right now, we're running the skid loader from one end of town to the other, and the speed on that is relatively slow compared to the 20 miles an hour we can get with the, with the unloader. Um, we've been pushing this idea around for four years now. I mean, most communities around are going to it just for the moving of the, the heavier stuff that we're getting. And you'd get a box, I mean, a normal scoop, you'd get a fork fork extension. Uh, most, so if we go to the smaller size, all of our skid loader attachments will still work on this too. Okay. The other, I mean, the other reason for it is, is you get the, the cage blade, which is a box blade. So when we're cleaning up downtown, you've got a 10 foot box blade instead of a six foot bucket and downtown would be cleaned up in a third of the time. And then you can roll out of that cage blade and then you have a 10-foot regular snow blade and continue on with the snow route. As far as size is concerned, this is about the same size as the skid loader then? It's a little bit, little bit bigger. A little bigger. Yeah, it's nothing bigger. like what our neighbor has. I mean, that thing's like a quarry end loader. Yeah. We're going, I don't know if you've seen like That's what I was thinking. Yes. I'm no. seeing pictures of smaller versions yes. that would be yes. akin to that. Yeah, the, one, the bigger ones would be far more money. Okay. It's about doing the job effectively and efficiently. Efficient, oh, yes. Yeah. So then the thought was then once this gets in place, you wouldn't need the backhoe. And then you could upgrade the mini hoe by trading that in for and the mini hoe to get a new mini hoe. And then the mini hoe could be used to be just a little bit bigger so that you can use, do that effectively out at the cemetery. You wouldn't need the backhoe for out there. 
Do we use the present backhoe for lunch? The backhoe part, no. The, the loader part, yes. Mainly all the digging we do, we try to use the, the mini because it's more compact and we can less, uh, less intrusive to the area. Track driven? No, this is this is the tires. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Other than that, that's um, you can just see the twenty-five thousand uh, for capital improvement, just to keep going in there for equipment. That's at the bottom there. That is pretty much it. All right. Any other questions about roads? No. All right, move on to 5B, budget presentation. Water. Um, this one, again, um, we'll look at the expenditures. Um, everything is pretty much the same or close to what it was last year. Um, Again, just kind of looking at the numbers of where we're at. Um, for instance, one example of things that have arisen, if you look down at under contractual services, technology services expense, this is for the telemetry system on the water system. You can see that's at 5326 already. So I went ahead and budgeted it to 9,000, moved it from eight, because obviously we're going to probably be over since this is a six month run. Um, you say telemetry, you mean the radio read? No, this uh, is the communications for the wells. Well, from the wells to... Yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> down to minor equipment. Um, currently budgeted 39. We bumped it back to 30. Uh, if you recall, the GPS unit um, is purchased out of this budget, so that's crossed off there. Um, again, we're going to take 15000 um, for the inloader out of there. Okay. And then um, I made a note there for new meters. It's just uh, whenever we order new meters, about $5,000. So. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you got any questions on there. Are these meters uh, computer read? Yeah. Can you drive around in the car? And <coughs> so basically, we, that's roughly about between water and sewer we split it 50 50 for the meters that's basically the ones that are that we have to replace due to age is the whole, is the whole town done yet with radio reads we have we have the rest of them that was going to be in my spiel yeah, we're, we're like on the last yeah phase, yeah, yeah yeah we're on the last these are just replacement meters new construction meters just you have meters that are expired due to age and quit working so <coughs> And then just one thing for probably next year, we're going to have some tower maintenance that we'll need to have done. So um, we'll try to get prepared for that. And uh, we talked to Maggie from Spear Financial. Um, right now, we're looking at a 1 to 2% increase in water and probably a 3% increase in sewer um, in July. Anything else with water? Any other questions? You said you got a um, maintenance on the water tower. What kind of maintenance? It's the uh, cleaning of them. Every three years, they got to be cleaned. So how many we got? You have two? Yeah. About 10,000 bucks. Won't be done this time, but just. Who does it? Send the tank? No, we actually have, we, they dive, is what we do. Um, they were on, uh, uh, they were supposed to do it this year, this last fall, and they haven't yet, so we're hoping to get it that way. And then, I can't even think of it now. It's okay if you don't remember. <laughs> no pressure. 
Anything else to that? No, we're going to move on. 5C, budget presentation. Sewer. Again, this is pretty, uh, very similar. Um, water and sewer kind of go hand in hand, especially with the, the wages come out of each equally. Uh, the meters, half of it comes out of water, half of it comes out of sewer, so you'll see kind of the same thing there. Um, if you look down under other contractual services, we do the sludge removal. It's approximately 15,000. Uh, we do that twice a year. And then all pump maintenance comes out of there. So that's going to stay, stay current. Um, minor equipment. One thing I did adjust on here, uh, this was this afternoon. We ended up, if you remember talking about we needed a sampler, and we couldn't get the sampler. Um, the company now has the parts in to repair the one that we have. So we are not going to need, we're going to fix this for probably about a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred, uh, versus the eight thousand dollar new sampler. So I've lowered that down um, to twenty thousand under minor equipment. So you won't see that reflected on yours because the pack was already put together. But um, and then we're going to also use the some money out of there for the uh, end loader. So all right, so the 30 shown here is 20. It's 20, correct. Okay. Yep. And he wants 15 for the, well, do 15 for the end loader and then 5 for just general <coughs> equipment, minor equipment needs. Okay. Liquid engineering. Right. Um, also, just so everyone's aware, the, on the water, um, the obviously the water main project is a whole different, <laughs> that's already been approved and going, so it's not reflected in that budget. It's got its own account. Okay. Any other questions on sewer? All right. We'll move on to 5D budget presentation in general. Um, all right. There's several of these, so we'll kind of go through. Um, we'll start on 28. This is uh, clerk tre page 28, clerk treasurer, financial admin. Um, this is just all of our in-house, uh, inside city hall uh, wages. Um, again, some of those are broken out into different departments. Uh, any type of training, association dues, um, staff development, conferences. Um, the only thing is, I kept technology services at 6,000 is because we need to do a server update uh, that, that's coming due. So I kept that at 6,000. Uh, she was talking about staff. Other than that, that's uh, pretty much the same. Uh, page 31 is legal services and attorney fees. Um, as you can see so far this year, we've only used 1575. Um, we budgeted 15,000. Hopefully that stays on pace, but you never know what's going to happen. So I just budget 15, just so we have it there. Um, City Hall building, which would be page 32. Um, one thing you noticed in here, and I don't know what it's going to take, we did have a company come out for the windows for, um, they were leaking water. Um, they looked at the seals, they thought the seals were good and it might be more coming up from upstairs, like in the wall, so I kept that the same price because we need to figure out what's going on there, if it is the window or what that is. So that's staying the same. Uh, grounds maintenance and everything else, you know, the, the only thing I really raised there is the electric and gas. Um, reason for that is that's gone up. You can see that we're at 49. I raised it to 9. Um, that's on pace to be 22 then. What's that? That's on pace to be a lot more than 9, isn't it? No, it's at 49.33. Oh, okay. So, And 
and on the last page you just see the insurance expense. Um, this is just a ballpark because our, our policies don't come due until March, I believe it is. So it's hard to it's hard to know right now. So as you can see, it's just kind of generally going going up. So just kind of ballpark, you know, basically it's going up four thousand a year. And we just put that in there, twenty four thousand, just to make sure we're covered. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it. Other general government. This one's pretty much the same all the time. You see the property tax for History Center in Lincoln Park. See that's Lincoln Square Park. Um, Non-program. This is going to be all of your permits and all your fees and uh, all that type of stuff. And again, this is just kind of, you take the average of what, what's come in so far for the six months and, and double it. Um, there's some refunds in there that you end up getting, but it's all little things. Um, transfers. Transfers in, this is going to be from Lost. This will be on page 38. Um, this kind of gives you a breakdown of what we spend um, outbound for lost. Um, typically, it's been thirty-six thousand each year for street lights, uh, thirty thousand for insurance, three thousand we give sauerkraut days for fireworks, four thousand for Southeast Land. I believe that's the after-school program. One thousand for the Dolly Parton Imaginary. Imagination Library, and I believe they wanted that again this year. Is that correct? <laughs> You're able to, yeah. Okay. And then the emergency levy, which that fluctuates based on your max tax rate, which we'll go over at the in a future meeting. That's twenty one one five four. And then we'd like to for loss transfer in fifty thousand out of loss for the telescoping inloader, and then four hundred thousand uh, for the sports complex. The only thing in addition to here that we hadn't talked about before, uh, if you recall, we were going to transfer the 400000 for the ball diamonds and sports complex. The only difference would be the 50000 for the end loader. Um, that account right now... I thought the end loader was about sixty five k. One sixty five. dollars Oh, one sixty five. dollars So right now... Um, there's quite a bit of money in there, and that's why we were taking the sports complex, 400000 out for that. Um, so the, if you recall, the lost money um, gave the parameters kind of more like a community, whole entire community purchase is what you want to do for that. So and that's why you see all that stuff in there is all things that could benefit anybody in the community. Um, Transfers out, these would be the reserve accounts for the library, EMA, fire department, and parks. Christina, am I missing anything there? Mm -hmm. All right, you want to go over TIFF? Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to 5E, TIFF. Sorry. TIFF has um, gotten a lot smaller than it has in years past because we have um, paid off two of the loans that have normally come out of there. And we've also have one of the two rebates done as well. So we only have budget lines left for a rebate. Um, and then we have the downtown rehab for 20000 And then our bond payments um, are going up compared to before because that's how the breakout is now in place for those loans that we've redone over the past year. So we're looking at 192 and one dollar for TIF funds, which is much nicer than we've been sitting for the last few years for that one. And we're looking to get in about 260,000 in TIF funds and paying out about 192, so. Okay. Any questions on TIF? 
Basically, you can see the total amount of five hundred twenty-four thousand to spend. Um, on Where are you right now? Page. Page, page thirty-three here. Yeah, you're there. I'm there. I'm there. there. Can't believe it. So you can see the um, the loss is kind of interesting. Obviously, it just goes with the how people spend. So it's hard to hard to guess where you're at. Um, you can actually see last year we took in. 438,512, but Christina, I believe there's an extra payment in there, correct? There is an extra payment um, due to the COVID and all that spending. And then also this year they've changed, instead of estimating our payments, they are waiting to give us our funds until they get the actual numbers. So we are getting more, more hardcore numbers, and that's why we didn't move it from what we've budgeted this year, because we are seeing the payments going a little lower then. So you'll see by the end of the year we're going to go. Uh, we're going to spend two hundred thousand more than we we are taking in, but that account is very healthy, and um, we need to spend some of it. So that's why the inloader and the sports complex is coming out of that. Is there a balance in that account? Is that why it's, it's on, on the, the treasurer's report? report. Um, we didn't have that this month. We currently have enough in that account to pretty much cover what we're wanting to take out of it, and that's before we even get the next six months yet. It's pushing so it's, eight or 900000 Yeah, it, it's a healthy so, account. Okay. Alright. Any questions on Lost? Alright. So we're done with all the budget presentation items. Uh, we'll go on to 6A. Public hearing for water main rehabilitation project. Do I have a motion to go into public hearing? So moved. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Um, we'll roll call this. Yes, All right, we'll roll call this. Uh, Mike. Aye. Rick. Aye. Sarah. Aye. John. Aye. I say aye. So we're in public hearing at seven twenty-eight. Who's up there? Give a little bit of background on this project. This is a project we've been working on for some time to replace some smaller diameter water mains and some mains that are problematic that have uh, frequent breaks. Uh, we have about 25 blocks of water main that we're replacing. Most of this is going to be located on Washington Street, Jackson Street, 2nd Street, Market Street. And we've got some smaller areas that we're doing in, in some of the side streets as well. So we're looking at uh, February 9th taking bids on this project. But uh, the main purpose of this is to eliminate the smaller diameter water main. Uh, the DNR did come out with a rule change quite a few years back, and they've been pushing on us to try to get that up size so that our smallest mains are six inch that serve fire protection. So those four inch mains and smaller are the ones that we're targeting. What will you be going to six inch? We have six and eight inch mains, and then we do have some larger mains as well that we're putting in uh, to replace. We've got some 10 inch mains that we're replacing. Uh, that's, that's older, that is problematic. So. Four is going up to eight. Uh, we, we do have some four that's going up to eight. We have uh, some four to six. six, yeah. So it just depends on the location, but in general, we try to target eight inch if we can. So it does pretty well for fire protection. You know, what's that for a shower? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Anything else? <coughs> no, that's it. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer those, but that's the uh, general purpose of the project. Approximate okay. start time on that? Uh, if we take bids in February, we're probably looking at a month delay by the time the contractor gets bonds and, and whatnot. So uh, we're going to have to be able to start in March. Uh, but with material delays, uh, it's been a little difficult to get materials on site. I would suspect we're probably looking at April and May after we'll be rolling on it. And that works well with the weather also. If you recall from the last meeting, um, there's going to be kind of one public works crew with them for shutoffs, locates, all that type of stuff. And then also, um, we did work with the school, and they're well aware of sauerkraut days and that type of stuff. So we're going to navigate the project around those those events and what have you. So, okay. Any other questions or discussion? All right. Do I have a motion to go out of public hearing? Motion to go out of public hearing. 
have a motion to go out. We have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Um, all right, Mike. Hi. Rick. Hi. John. Hi. Sarah. Hi. I say aye. We're out of public hearing. All right, so item 6B, public hearing for well number five project. Do I have a motion to go into public hearing? So moved. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. Um, Sarah. Aye. Rick. Aye. John. Aye. Mike. Aye. I say aye. All right, we're in public hearing at 7. <coughs> As you may recall, we had uh, an issue with our railroad well a few years back, uh, contamination, and then the railroad came in and said that they were going to require us to abandon that well. We're down to two wells. Uh, this well will replace that well that was abandoned as our standby well and to give us firm capacity that meets the peak day. Uh, this is going to be located in the northwest corner of Jefferson Market, uh, up in the, uh, the park area, uh, west of Myers Meadow. And uh, it will be a slurrying well similar to the ones that we have, uh, about 400 feet deep, and our estimated production out of that is 300 gallons per minute, similar to what we have out of well four. So this part of the project is just to drill the well and test the water. It won't have the well pump or the chemical feed building that goes with it. That'll be a second phase. We want to make sure that the well water is good, and that we get good volume. Uh, that, that's enough that we can justify putting in the treatment. So this part uh, bids, and we have uh, February 9th also, we have about a six-month process in order to get the well drilled and get the test back. Some of those tests take about a month and a half to two months to get back in the lab to verify that we have good water quality. So once we uh, get the preliminary test back, uh, we'll be designing the chemical B building because that could go wherever the well goes, but it's site-specific as far as some of the building and uh, water main. We'll have it ready to go. We'll let it for bit as soon as we get uh, test information back on this. So this part is just for the well casing, put in the ground, and then test the water quality. And I think this, this is paid for through a grant, uh, I forget the uh, grant, uh, County, uh, County ARPA funds. They allocated about a million dollars. A million dollar one. Yes, so we put in a, an application for that, and, and they indicated they would set aside a million dollars for the well project. So that should hopefully cover the entire project, but uh, depending upon uh, what we see here with the well, that'll uh, tell us uh, our next steps. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Any questions for this bill subject? Okay. okay. Um, do I have a motion to go out of public hearing? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Mike. Mike. Rick. Aye. John. Aye. Sarah. Aye. I say aye. Uh, all right, we are our public hearing. All right, 6C, set public hearing for proposed property tax levy for fiscal year 24 for February 13th. So we did this last time. However, the language in the state advises a 10 to 20 day window for posting that four to 20. So by the date we set last time, it won't meet those standards to get it to the paper. So it is in the paper, is it mm -hmm. this week? So uh, I request a motion for a public hearing set for February 13th, which will be our next meeting. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to set the public hearing for February 13th. Do I have a second? Second. A motion a second. Mike. Aye. Rick. Aye. John. Aye. Sarah. Aye. And I say aye. 6D, set public hearing for fiscal year 24 budget for March 13th. Uh, they have to be done and approved by the 31st. This would, if we do it in the first meeting in March, that would give us an opportunity if there's something amiss, we have one more meeting in March to get it done by the deadline. So okay. I request a public hearing set for the 13th of March. All right. Uh, I'll make a motion to set the public hearing for March 13th. Do I have a second? Second. A motion a second. Mike. Aye. Rick. Aye. John. Aye. Sarah. Aye. I say aye. All right, moving on to item seven, correspondences. Uh, nothing like this one. All right, moving on to 8A, city engineer's report. We've covered the uh, overlay project out on Highway 30 already, and as I mentioned, I'll, I'll let the council know how those bits turn out, and that'll uh, indicate what we want to do with that going forward, whether it's uh, worthwhile for us to pursue funding that project. Uh, the other two projects I've reported on are the well project and the water main project. So once we receive
receive bids on the 9th, uh, report to the council and make recommendation. Uh, unless anybody has any questions, I don't have anything else to report on. Has the Highway 30 project gone out for bid yet? The Highway 30 project did go out for bids earlier, and we received bids that were much higher than anticipated. We had estimated that based off of the work that the county was doing uh, to the east. And uh, when we spoke with the contractor, they thought they could hold prices, but when we let it, uh, the prices were significantly higher. So uh, that's why we're sitting waiting in, in order to find out if the pricing is going to go down a little bit, looking for some competition and also for a little bit of a break in the market. So should know here from this next project whether that's happening, and if it is, then we'll put it back out. We also did uh, put concrete patching as a separate bid. It was previously in that project and the primary uh, contractors that were interested were asphalt contractors, so some of that patching was bid pretty expensively. We pulled that out, have it done already, so we don't have that as a part of the project and we were able to save some money, but we're still waiting for those asphalt prices to lower the one put back out. All right, any other questions? Thank you, Dave. Uh, 8B, Public Works Director Report. Uh, like I said earlier, we're gonna be working on the avenues to get a couple of those radio reads put in. Um, the other thing is, is I just want to want to kind of touch base on is in 2010 the city of Lisbon had about 22 lane miles to take care of. Now we're pushing close to 40. Um, same way with like parks, we had 11 acres that we had to mow and take care of. Now we're going to be pushing close to 56. So when we talk about equipment and to be more efficient, we're, we're not the same town we were in 2010. I mean, we need to be able to, with the workforce we have, we need to be able to have the tools to do the job more efficient, and that's what we're looking to do. Okay. Any other questions for Travis? All right. HC, Parks and Rec Director Report. Don't have a whole lot. We just had our first boys basketball games on Saturday. Those went very well. We have four weeks left, and other than that, I'm just doing snow removal as the snow comes down. Okay. Thank you, sir. HD Police Department report. Nothing beyond what's in the report unless you have questions. Anything, anyone? All right. Thank you, Doug. Yep. HD Ambulance Director report. Nothing to add unless you have questions. Anything? Okay. ADF, Fire Chief and City Administrator's Report. I uh, do not have anything fire related tonight. Um, administrator Report, we are. We had a contractor come out to the History Center to reference the caulking of the windows. So uh, we're waiting to get a bid back from that. So I should have that for the next meeting. Uh, been working on the budget, uh, working with YTT, they did uh, get a new design, we're hoping to get a new board out here, um, and I am hoping that we have some sort of update for bids for the ball diamonds at the next meeting, um, or at least the timeline of when that's going to take place. Um, worked with uh, Lynn County Building, and um, also working on a few nuisances here and there. And then just as a reminder, I'll be out of the office the 26th through the 2nd. That is it. Thank you, Brandon. All right. Um, <coughs> 8G, Council and Mayor reports. Um, Sarah, you want to start us off? Sure, I really don't have anything. It's Monday, it's a good day. One of my favorite days of the week. More than positive attitude. Exactly. All right, we'll take that. Well, it's a new week, a new day. <laughs> you know, it's just a new goals for the week. It's just, it's good. All right. Good, good start. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. John. Uh, food pantry. Uh, as we learned from Southeast Land, it's at an all time high in demand for food. Uh, their 12 month budget. It's already been met in seven months. And so they can use help. Uh, if you want to help them, the best way is to donate money because they can buy food cheaper than you can at the local grocery store. Plus, it's a lot easier. Um, and they need volunteers. You have a question? 
No, oh. I just yelled. Uh, uh, friends of the Lisbon Library, uh, we're looking for more uh, members. Uh, we've had uh, a couple people uh, drop out and uh, due to various reasons. And we had a roundup uh, with Gary's Foods, uh, and uh, we we're splitting that with Mount Vernon Library. So, but it was still very productive. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you, John. Uh, Rick? Um, the only I got is I just want to say prayers go out to uh, the students that's lost their lives today in the school shooting in Des Moines. Uh, it was like an alternative school, we understood it. So you, um, and as you well know, we have an alternative school here too, downtown. So, you know, this. Uh, this violence can happen anywhere. We're not immune from it by one dead. So I guess there's two dead and they arrested the suspect, but it still happens. So. All right, thank you, Rick. Um, Mike, you have anything? Nothing. All right. Could it be oh. um, I don't have anything. I just had a couple questions about um, some budgetary things, but I'll talk to Travis and Christina after that. Uh, so yeah, I got nothing. Um, Doug's out, obviously, so nothing for mayor. Uh, is there any other business? All right, meeting adjourned.